Well, good evening. Um, my name is Michael Carp, and I'll be facilitator for this um, uh, this meeting. And uh, I wanted to thank you for coming out tonight to hear about Glendale Water and Power's uh, proposed electric rate request. So. Um, with that, I'm going to inter introduce the, the panel. We have Steve Linz, who's the Chief Assistant General Manager uh, of GWP, and Ramon Abweg, who also Chief Assistant General Manager, and Eric Campbell, who's the, uh, the City of Glendale Finance Administrator. And Steve is going to uh, start the meeting with a welcome and kicking off the presentation. Uh, welcome, everyone. <clears throat> Once again, my name is Steve Lins, and I'm one of two Chief Assistant General Managers for Glendale Water and Power. Uh, my responsibilities include uh, power supply and customer support. And we'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to um, show you our electric rate plan and get your feedback on that plan. And we're trying to build on some success that we've had over the past couple of years doing community outreach. So we really do appreciate you showing up and, and participating. I'd like to start with um, a video that'll show you a little bit about the history of Glendale Water and Power. Glendale Water and Power proudly provides safe and reliable utility services to nearly 200,000 residents and businesses of Glendale. In 1909, the Glendale Power and Light Company was purchased as a means to save money, generate municipal revenue, and provide Glendale residents a reliable source of energy. Providing local energy meant local money stayed local instead of going to big electric company stakeholders. Investing in Glendale Water and Power also meant having a consistent source of revenue for general city services like public safety, parks, and libraries, even amid federal and state budget cuts. As the city grew, investments in newer sources of energy were made to meet the increasing demands of residents and businesses. In 1937, Glendale invested in Hoover Dam, becoming one of the first cities in California to supply customers with renewable energy. Soon thereafter, the Grayson Power Plant was constructed and began operations in 1941. Through the years, GWP has tripled the generating capacity of the plant, allowing it to keep the city running, especially in times of storms and other natural disasters. Since 2005, GWP has invested more than $100 million to modernize its operations and infrastructure. Glendale's self-reliant power resources guarantee fewer and shorter power outages than neighboring cities, keeping our customers' busy lives up and running. Today, your utility is already thinking ahead to the next 100 years. To reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, we have made investments in new sources of clean, renewable energy, such as solar, wind, small hydro, and geothermal, Currently, 20% of power generation is from renewable resources and are on track to expanding the renewable portfolio to over 30% by 2020. A recent example of this effort is the use of the naturally produced methane gas from the Shoal Canyon landfill as a renewable fuel for the Grayson Power Plant, as well as a source of revenue for the city. Glendale Water and Power is a leader in the utility industry. Along with aggressive conservation efforts, GWP has been giving back to the community through its public benefit programs. These programs assist low-income customers with their electric bills and educate all customers on new technologies that can help save money and lower energy and water consumption. Having received $21 million in state and federal grant funding, Glendale Water and Power embarked on a new modernization project this includes updating to new state-of-the-art electric and water digital meters and transforming the distribution system to improve reliability and reduce costs. Your local utility is committed to reducing its reliance on purchased water and continuously looks for new groundwater resources. 
the latest discovery, the Foothill Well is producing over 200 gallons a minute of local groundwater. GWP is a pioneer in the removal of chromium-6 from groundwater supplies. Glendale's testing facility is conducting the research that will be the foundation on which industry guidelines will be established. Growing from a utility that once served a mere 200 customers to 85,000 today, Glendale Water and Power has continued to grow and improve to meet the demands of a thriving, dynamic city. Our dedicated staff is committed to maintaining our existing infrastructure and making smart investments to best serve our customers now and in the future. Glendale Water and Power, building today for a stronger tomorrow. Um, there's some great history in that video, and you know I can confirm as the chief AGM of Power Supply that some of the facilities that we put in place at Grayson Power Plant in 1941 are actually still operating today. It's it's, it's pretty amazing. I'd like to start by saying a word about um, reliability. Um, reliability is our number one priority, and that's keeping the lights on. And I would like to just read our vision, for, which is printed on the back of our business cards. And that vision is to provide customers with reliable and sustainable water and power services that are cost effective and innovative. And just one other point along those lines is that you know we have a legal obligation to serve along those lines. Anybody that wants service here in the city of Glendale, we're legally obligated to provide that service and make sure that we keep the lights on. So I'd like to talk a bit about some of our past challenges and future challenges with respect to the system. And you can see on the slide, and I'm not sure how well you can read it from where you are, but We've had um, challenges like earthquakes and energy crisis, heat waves and wind storms. And in several instances, we've fared much better than the utilities around us. In the earthquake in 1994, we separated from the LADWP system. And because we had a power plant here in the city of Glendale, we had our power back up in a matter of hours when many of the cities around us took a couple of days, two, three days to get their power back up. Um, Similarly, um, in the energy crisis, we had cities around us um, subject to rolling brownouts and blackouts. And because of uh, our system configuration, we weren't subjected to that. And, and the citizens in Glendale were able to, to get electricity throughout that crisis. And finally, more recently, in 2011, we had a windstorm. And once again, we fared very well. We were back up in hours. And in fact, we're assisting our sister utilities whose customers, um, some, some of which were down for up to a week um, as a result of that. Our current challenges include maintaining the utilities so that um, we keep up that record of reliability. And to do that, we're trying to optimize the system by cutting costs and jobs. We've done that over this last year under our new management. We're trying to fund um, necessary capital improvements. This last year we had a zero capital improvement budget, so moving forward we're trying to fund uh, critical capital improvements for the system. And um, most importantly, I think the last bullet here talks about cost-effective ways to meet ever-increasing uh, regulations and mandates. And we've, over just the last few years, been hit with several mandates, including renewable energy mandates, uh, cap and trade um, regime for carbon. Um, in addition, the, the third major area is uh, federal reliability requirements that resulted from some of the major blackouts um, on the East Coast. So it's a real challenge to, to meet all these mandates and try to keep um, costs at a reasonable level. I'm going to just say a few things uh, about our system, get you s familiar with our system. Um, I like this next slide because it really shows you the, um, the breadth of our system. Most people don't think uh, about how far our system might go outside of just the boundaries of Glendale. Uh, I don't expect any of you be, to be able to actually read this map, but um, the green squares on the map are our generation units or generation units that we have uh, a share in. The lines in between those are transmission lines. And the main point I want you to see from this slide is that Glendale's generation and supply system span the entire western United States. Um, the next couple of slides um, are a little bit more specific about our power mix and the types of resources we have. Currently in 2012, we're at about 20% renewable energy, which is a mandate of the state. Um, we've got 
It's hard to see from here. We've got about 25% coal, about 10% uh, purchases, 30% natural gas, um, some large hydroelectric, and some other renewable options. Um, so we've got a mix of resources. However, in 2012, we need to take those renewables from 20% to 33%, 2020, excuse me, from 2012 to 2020, we have to go from 20% to 33%. And those renewable resources, for the most part, will replace market purchases. And on average, renewable energy costs about 40% more per unit than those market purchases do now. So that's one more challenge that we have in terms of meeting the mandate and trying to keep the system cost um, lower. At this time, I'm going to have Ramona Buig come up and talk to you a little bit about our system within the boundaries of the city of Glendale. Yeah, good evening. Uh, Ramona Buig, I'm responsible for both the electrical and water services. And uh, Steve talked to you about the resources. So he brings the energy into the city, and it's my responsibility to distribute it. And at, uh, at the end of the day, I'm the person responsible for keeping the lights on within the city. And, and what that means to me is that, uh, if you didn't realize this, we have about 550 miles of wires that run through the city, both overhead and underground. It ranges from 69,000 volts down, down to 120 volts that go into your houses. Um, and what we do is we take the power that, that is delivered to us at the airway substation, at the power plant, and then through our 12 substations, we distribute that. From the 12 su substations, we have 108 uh, feeders, or those are the circuits that are actually used to distribute the, uh, the power to your houses. Um, and uh, Steve talked about what we've done what we've been doing is we have been investing heavily back into our infrastructure. And the main objective, as I see pointed out, is to keep our reliability. Again, you know, those of you that know me, uh, we have been talking about the investments way back in 2006, 2007, the last time we had rate increases. I came before you as well and said that we need to invest so much money in order to reduce the number of outages that we've been experiencing at that point throughout the city. We did that, and this is an example of what, what, where the investments have been made. We invested into our electric services. Those are the wires and facilities and substations in the city. Uh, and we've, we've also um, invested into the different resources to make sure that we have power available to mix up the power that we have coming from the uh, Grayson power plant. Uh, and how does that, what does that mean to you? What we're trying to achieve on an average is if you live in Glendale, this is what that graph says, is if you live in Glendale, what we hope on the average is that you have one outage per year at the most. Some of you may say, wait, wait a minute, I had three outages last year. I'm talking about average. Okay, in certain areas we may have bigger problems and some of them we can't control. Uh, I can tell you that my number one and two enemies here in the city are squirrels and mylar balloons. We can't control those. Uh, squirrels love to chew on the wires. Mylar balloons, especially this time of year during graduation, we've had two outages already because of mylar balloons. So this is also an outreach. If you know or if you are using mylar balloons, please do not release them in the air because you never know when they come down. When they come down, they get caught in power lines. We do have problems, outages because of them. Uh, so what this graph means is, here's our average, and, and this, oh, and the, oh, I'm sorry, this is our, our goal, and we're averaging and hovering right around one. And the other cities that we compare ourselves to, uh, Edison, Pasadena, Burbank, and LA, it looks like they're doing better than we are. Uh, there's different ways that this data is being reported. One thing that we do here in Glendale that's different than the other cities is, we report every event. We capture them and we try to prevent them. Uh, the way the standards are written is if they have any major events or things that they cannot prevent, like a car hit pole, they don't necessarily have to count them, but we do. Okay? Oops. On this next slide, uh, what, what this shows is how we are 
but how we restore the outages. This is really a measure of how quickly we try to restore the outages. Again, this is an average over 84,500 customers. Our goal is to keep it below 40 minutes. And as you can see in, in this graph, here's GWP, the blue line. Uh, Burbank is the purple line. And uh, let me point out that Pasadena looks like they're doing a lot worse. They did pretty bad last year because of the wind outages that they have. Uh, like Steve pointed out, some of their customers were out for power for about a week. Uh, one thing that I hope we will never experience here is in that, in that case, be, uh, what we're doing here is we're investing a lot into our facilities to prevent this from happening. I don't believe there's anyone here that's been out of power for more than our day, even on any serious events that we've had in the last eight years that have been responsible for the electric system. Okay. Uh, so the other projects that we're looking at, uh, you've heard about the smart grid. But what really it's about is about utility modernization. The graphs that you show, how have we been managing this? We have been installing a lot of smart systems into the old system they have. The wires, one thing about the utility system since the 1940s, the poles, the wires, everything in the substation, the hardware has not changed. What we've been doing is installing more intelligence so that when we do experience an outage, we're able to detect whether or not it's what we call a momentary outage or a permanent outage. If it's a momentary outage, within 10 seconds, we can restore the power. If it's a permanent outage that requires repair, that's, that's a different story. So the reason why our numbers are a lot lower uh, on, on the recovery is because we're able to automate a lot of the outage recovery that we have. Ultimately, with the modernization project, once we get done with what we call distribution automation, we'll be able to isolate the areas where the problems really are without having to send a troubleman to isolate. That's the intent of the modernization project, is to be able to automate and, and keep our reliability high. And, and, and these are just the different components uh, of the modernization. And what you will see uh, at your homes, we have the digital meters, and these are the different programs that, that at some point will, will be implemented to help you manage and control the energy that you use in your homes. So with that, let me transfer it back to Steve. I'd like to just say a few words about our um, five-year capital plan so you have an idea of the areas where we spend most of our capital on. Generally, we need to spend about 20 to $30 million a year to maintain the utility and keep up the reliability. Um, the breakdown of this chart shows that on distribution over the next five years, we're spending about $60 million. On the power plant, we're spending you know, about $5 million a year for a total of $18 million over five years. A little bit on transmission and then uh, 10 million on um, utility modernization. So over five years, that's a total of $94 million in all of those areas. Basically distribution, the power plant, and some modernization. And that's right around, that's right near the, the lower end of that range that I mentioned, which is about the 20 to $30 million a year that we need to spend to, to maintain the utility. So at this point, I would like to turn it over to Eric Campbell, our finance administrator, and he's going to talk to you about the financial position of the utility. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. My name is Eric Campbell. I'm the finance administrator for Glendale Water and Power. Um, just a quick concluding thought on the capital plan. As you saw, that's a big number out there, five years and about $100 million. Uh, the electric utility industry is the most capital intensive industry there is and that's one of the biggest reasons that uh, we serve as a monopoly in this uh, for the city. What I'm going to do tonight is talk to you about uh, quickly about our financial position, recent past, where we're at today and where we hope to go with this uh, with the results from this proposed rate plan. I'll then explain uh, the rates to you, uh, I'll show you uh, where uh, what the rates will actually be for for you and um, show you some generalities about how we compare um, to the other neighboring folks. Um, this is a complex uh, topic. Um, 
I'll try my best to help make it uh, understandable, and then at the end, I'll be in the back, and I'll be very happy to uh, uh, take your questions and do my best to answer. If I don't have a quick answer for you tonight, I'll certainly uh, be responsive, and uh, we'll get it posted so that you become informed with what you'd like to know. One last thing before I start is um, at the back, I'd just like to remind you we have customer service reps that can uh, actually plug in some numbers to show you just what the impact would be um, on the bill if this were to pass uh, um, with the City Council. So this is a very complicated slide and I'd like to first just kind of walk, walk uh, you through the orientation of it. Um, the title of it is Financial Plan, it's titled 87522, and those are system average rate increases that we're proposing um, over the next five years. The, uh, for the, the actual graph here, I'm pointing at the bottom of it, there's a timeline the recent uh, actual performance is on the left, and uh, the forecast is on the right. The uh, first numbers that I'll, I'll talk to you about is, I guess, the axis over here. This is millions of dollars. Now for the information. The solid blue line going across is the city council mandated level of cash reserves that we have to have on hand. The purpose for the reserves is to handle uh, unplanned uh, emergencies, outages, and issues that we need to uh, respond to to keep the lights on. As I said or earlier, this is the most capital intensive industry there is. Um, the uh, comparison to what the mandate is, the red solid line is where our cash reserves have been and where they're currently at. They're currently uh, much below that line, but the plan is to restore close to the, uh, the mandated levels by the end of this plan. The other uh, issue I'd like to go through is our capital planning, our capital spend. Right now you see a very small 5.3 compared to uh, other past and future plans. That number there actually represents customer funded uh, capital program that we're doing this year. That means that certain um, customers have paid us to do specific work for their systems. The plan though is uh, to do some ongoing maintenance and, and uh, building of our infrastructure. The first three years will be funded by a bond issue, but the goal is to be able to, uh, in the future, not rely on bonds for additional capital. We'd, we're building in a uh, component to our, our funds so that we can do a uh, pay-as-we-go program uh, so that we won't have to issue more bonds in the future. <clears throat> so this slide is the similar setup, and what it's comparing is this rate plan with the solid lines, and then if we don't get the approval and no rate action is taken, where two important metrics are. I picked uh, the cash reserves to show you that uh, if we don't get this plan in place, the utility will actually become insolvent uh, in about four years. That means they won't have cash to um, purchase the power they need and just run the operations. The uh, solid green line is net operating income and without the rate plan, it's going to continue to show that our costs are not aligned with our revenues, and that's just not a sustainable uh, practice. So, moving on to uh, the electric rates, what I'd like to do here is uh, show you a little bit of rate management. This slide is, could be called History Repeats Itself. And again, the bottom here is a timeline, and this, sir, this item over here, these bars, represent this proposed rate plan that we are uh, talking about here this evening. On the far left is the last time we had a rate increase at the, at the electric utility. What it is is in uh, 2006, a, a two-year rate plan was put in place for fiscal seven. The number was 11.7%. And then 2008, a 5.1% increase. After that period, there was a period of actually no rate movements. And the story essentially is there was a hole to dig out of in 2007, 2008, a big increase, no action. And now we find ourselves in a hole that we have to dig ourselves out of. That's obviously not a uh, preferred way for customers to see their bills being big jumps and stuff. The, the, a more preferred strategy, we believe, would be a, a steady, slow, and easy pace would uh, be more preferable. On the next slide, I've got some examples I can compare that to. 
The uh, LA Department of Water and Power recently has uh, uh, done a, about a 4.8 uh, increase last year. They have a plan for 6%, so that would represent two fairly decent large size uh, increases. But then in uh, comparison to that, Pasadena Water and Power and Burbank have uh, recently been doing the slow, steady 1%, 2% per year. So going back to this slide, it was, you can see where our, our, rate, our rate action is comparable to LADWP where we have these big increases, nothing, and then big increases where someone like Pasadena and Glendale have been doing the slow and steady type approach, which we believe is much more palatable. That's one of our goals for this plan is to dig ourselves out and be able to uh, more actively manage these rates in the future. So this is probably the most important slide um, for you to understand. I've talked to you, uh, I've mentioned the 87522 in my earlier slides, and those are system average rates. But what you're looking at here is the actual rates that uh, the customer classes would be hit with. So for residential, for example, although the system average is eight, the residentials will have a higher rate. It'll be 8.8 .8 in 2014, followed by 7.7, 5.5, 2.2, and 2.2. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to explain a little bit about that and what that means, but um, this is a visual of that comparison. So over the life, you can see that uh, those numbers are different, but here's how they stack up, literally, is you can see that the residential over the life of this plan are being uh, hit harder, larger increase comparable to the small commercial, medium commercial, and large, large commercial. There's a reason for that. There's a couple things going on there. It's called Proposition 26. It's a uh, California state mandate, state law, that our rates are set based on cost causation. So what I've done here is I have an illustration to show you a couple of, of things that we had to consider. First of all, where do our revenues with the current rates currently come from? And for example, our residential uh, customers result in 35.2% uh, of our overall income. But what does it cost to provide that service? 35.9%. So what, what we have to do with the Prop 26 is make it as close, closely matched up as, as we can. Here's a visual that shows that comparison between cost and revenues by the rate classes. Now we've made our best effort to get them as close as we can um, to be in compliance with the mandate. The past practice before Proposition 26 was to be within 10% of the cost. So there was much more leeway and quite honestly that meant that for years the uh, big businesses have been subsidizing the uh, residential. That's just a fact of every utility around. However, the law is making us do this, and um, we're working on it. So I got some slides here that give you a, some broad comparisons between our rates and our neighboring utilities. But just to keep in mind, to check and see what the actual impact will be on, on your bill, we have a rate calculator in the back to uh, help you through that. So what this, shot, what this chart is showing you is something called system average rate. That gets back to the general 87522 that I've been, been talking about. And what the slide is showing, the green bars are the current rates that are in effect for each of the neighboring utilities. The orange tips on these are the known proposed uh, rate increases that the various utilities have, uh, are putting out. So, in, in summary, what we're looking at here is Glendale Water and Power is a little bit to the right, a little bit higher than the average of all these neighboring utilities on system average. Getting a little bit more specific, looking at a residential bill that has a consumption level of 500 kilowatt hours in a month, this is how the numbers compare. Here, uh, GWP is showing that uh, it is to the left of center. It's uh, rate compares very favorably in this comparison. For small commercial uh, businesses, 2,000 kilowatt hours per month. Um, Glendale Water and Power is just a little bit to the left of center. I mean, a little bit lower than, uh, than most. 
And for the larger commercial 100,000 kilowatt hours per month, Glendale Water and Power is essentially uh, right in the middle. This is getting a little bit more specific. This is showing um, what our system average, the, the average bill would be for our, uh, a couple of our rate classes. For, so for example, the single family in the city of Glendale, the average consumption is 659 kilowatt hours per month. So to take that type of number and apply it to what, what the bill would be now, $103.15, under this new plan, it would go up to 112.31. That's a $9.16 per month increase for 2014. Now, the next year, there'll be the additional increase, an additional $8.85 per month, and so on through the life of this. So these are additive. It's, um, these are additive rates. We have a low discount, uh, low income discount senior uh, program, and this slide does not reflect our final decision. This are the the ten dollar discount is what we have been offering for for those folks in that program. It's uh, under review, and we're looking at it right now to try to figure out just uh, what we can do with that to uh, minimize the impact for the seniors and the low income program. I'll keep on mentioning that we have a uh, rate calculator uh, in the back. It's also posted online so that you can plug in your own numbers if you'd like. And this is a screenshot of what it looks like. Essentially, going from left to right, this is what your current bill actually will be. And then going across is the um, impact and the change in your bill. One of the things you're seeing there is the uh, green bar here. This is the fuel adjustment clause. I'm going to go to the next slide and kind of in increase the size of it so you can see it a little bit better. The fuel adjustment clause is holding the variance in cost that we've incurred. And over time, essentially what that green bar represents today is the cost of all the renewables that we've had to purchase to be in compliance with the state mandate. So since those specific contracts are long term and we're going through this big rate um, uh, effort here, we have taken those existing dollars, the 8.96 cents per kilowatt hour, and put it into the energy uh, charge. We've essentially swept out the fuel adjustment mechanism, the fuel adjustment clause, so it is now set back to zero. It still exists and it's anticipated that it'll be used, but it's at zero. Um, which is, it's important to clean that up. It was, um, ended up being a little bit, uh, about a third of your, you can see it's about a third of your, uh, of your charge there currently. Um, the intent was not to get it that big. The, the actual increase in your energy charge is 1.16 uh, cents per kilowatt hour um, with this, um, the first year of the rate plan. I've just gone through a lot of stuff, and I know it was a lot to try to digest. Um, we're about to finish up, and I'll turn it back over to our moderator, but I'll be sitting in the back, and I'd be very happy to uh, talk to you and try to help you uh, answer questions, and uh, I'd just like to say thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience for the presentation, and um, the design the design for the, for the next 45 minutes or hour is to um, go to various stations here based on the topics presented, including the rate calculator for your, yourselves. Uh, and um, we'll go more in depth answering any questions you have. If we can't answer them, we'll record them and find the answer and, and put that on the website. Uh, we'll record any, any uh, the thrust of the comments you have and we'll have discussion on any of these topics. You can rotate around. Um, and um, so that's what we're going to adjourn at this point, this part of the meeting, and uh, into the breakout session. Thank you.